What a piece of garbage. You know, they're going to have Raw in two weeks go to three hours. What the fuck are they thinking when the quality of the shows is this horrible? We start off with 19 minutes of, what the fuck? You got AJ proposing to CM Punk and then Daniel Bryan uh, proposing to... AJ, and they get into a battle. You know, the master of the pipe bomb in 2011 is now turning into a little pathetic piece of shit, uh, you know, in this storyline where he's getting overshadowed by a 19-year-old. It's the most outrageous fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. The WWE champion is overshadowed by a mere diva. Um, the anonymous role general manager comes back and, you know, I used to like when Michael Cole would say, can I have your attention, please? But I wasn't in the mood tonight. And, uh, they make a match tonight, a tag match with Eve and AJ. Um, you know, after 19, 19 minutes of this bullshit, I didn't even fucking care anymore. This just numbed my brain, and I wasn't in the mood for anything else. Then we get Sheamus beating Jack Swagger, who should just commit suicide already. Jack Swagger so pathetic. He's not even in Money in the Bank, but Tyson Kidd and Damian Sandow are. Um, you know, Sheamus just beats him in less than a minute. Fucking pathetic. Um... And then Alberto Del Rio starts mocking him on the tight end shrine, and then the bro kicks him again. <laughs> really, it's like, okay, squash match. Who cares? He's not an up-and-comer. Why does he need to have a squash match? He doesn't really need to look strong. He's won all his matches already. Not really necessary. But then up next, we've got um, Santino and Zack Ryder in some ridiculous segment backstage. Where he's wearing the Sherlock Holmes cap. They did this a few months back with R-Truth. Just as lame when he did it. Um, he's going around. He finds a cell phone backstage. And he's talking to Kali about it. Kali doesn't even know how to fucking speak English. It's, it's pointless. It's stupid. What the fuck are they doing? It doesn't even make any sense. He's looking for the, the uh, Raw General Manager... He's looking around. He's not even saying anything funny. It's just fucking lame. It's like the magic school bus or the dragon tells backstage. Like, what the fuck's going on? Um, then you got Tensai and Ziggler um, defeating Tyson Kidd and Christian. The, they don't have any entrances. They come back from the commercial break after, after the Santino garbage. And they're already in the ring. Um, a minute later and the match is over. Tensai... Um, pins Christian, he pins the Intercontinental Champion, uh, wow, <laughs> and then Vicky Guerrero is eyeing, uh, Tensai, um, destroying Tyson Kidd, I guess she's interested in becoming his manager too, maybe she's gonna dump Dolph Ziggler for Tensai, I really hope that that doesn't become a feud in the near future, Ziggler's a lot better than that, uh, Wow, so now Tyson, Kidd, and Christian just like in a squash match there. They look fucking weak. weak uh, the Intercontinental Champion going into a match like this. Um, the Money in the Bank, a prestigious match, and they look like fucking jobbers. Good job! Um, up next, you got Brodus Clay defeating Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre made me laugh. Um, he's, you know, he, he didn't even have an entrance, so you already know he's going to lose, but he's like, you people cheer for the same song and dance every week, but he wasn't even mic'd, so most people probably didn't even hear it, um, he loses in less than a minute, another squash match, another squash match, the third fucking squash match in a row, then, uh, up next, you got Jericho reuniting to take on Cena and Kane, this was just a slow, boring-ass match, um, Big Show grabs Cena after he FUs um, Jericho in the match, and they just call for the bell. What? How does that constitute a disqualification? Or, I don't even know if it was a disqualification. You know, Cena actually might have won this match, but I think it was a no contest. No decision was announced. Uh, just fucking retarded. A bad match, and just an even worse finish. Uh, then you got... Uh, Sin Cara defeating Slater, 
Um, and another squash match, the fourth squash match of the night. Um, yeah, I mean, okay little fast matcher, but nothing really to write home about. Um, then after that, Bob Backlund comes in, and, you know, he the crowd knows who he was. I like Bob Backlund back in the day, but couldn't they have gotten a more modern superstar than this? I mean, you got Psycho Sid... Vader, you, you see where I'm going with this, Diamond Dallas Page, all guys from like the late, you know, 90s, no, you know, but Bob Backlund's mostly an 80s wrestler, yes, he had a good match for Bret Hart at Survivor Series 94, but come on, they're chanting, you still got it, because he's doing his little dance in the ring, but, you know, I, I really, I like, wasn't in the mood to see Bob Backlund, I would have rather s saw somebody like Gangrel or Steve Blackman, I mean, some Attitude Era star, Someone, like, better than that. I mean, they could have brought back Ken Shamrock if he agreed to. Maybe he would come if they asked him. Or X-Pac, better yet. You know what I mean? Come on. Um, then up next, you got Cole and Jerry Lawler. And the crowd says that they want this matchup. They're cheering for it. And Cole says they're all hypocrites because they don't want to see Cole and, and, and Law. They always complain that when this match takes place. I guess he's talking about the internet. Well, he's right. They are hypocrites. Then they go to a poll online, and then everybody voted yes to it. Uh, okay, that was obviously rigged. Um, you know, he gives him an airplane spin, uh, but then pins him. Booker T had to throw him back in the ring because he tried to run. Then they get an um, email from the anonymous Raw general manager, and then he tells them that they're going to reverse the decision, much like they did at WrestleMania. Um, Santino comes out in his little ridiculous outfit, and then we learned that it was actually... Hornswoggle, who was the anonymous Raw general manager all along. Lane, thanks a lot for ruining two years of WWE programming with this ridiculous uh, closing to this mystery. What the fuck are they thinking? Um, up next, you got the main event, Punk and AJ defeating Daniel Bryan and Eve. Not much of a match. Eve gets her ass kicked by AJ, and then Daniel Bryan won't even tag her in, so... um. She, um, AJ just rolls her up with a schoolboy, and then after that, um, you know, just a waste of a match. Then AJ just slaps both Punk and Daniel Bryan because Punk says, "I won't marry you." You know, he was such a, uh, you know, such a, a great revolutionary star in 2011, and now he's this. Look what he's reduced to. Even Eve tells him. That he's emasculated by this storyline. What a horrible episode of Raw. I mean, the 1,000th episode looks like it's going to be okay. But, um, wow, tonight was just fucking bullshit. Just nothing redeemable at all about this episode. Just the biggest piece of flaming bullshit i ever seen. This was like Vince McMahon just put a flaming bag of dog shit on my doorstep. I open it up thinking it's going to be half decent. I open the door... But then I, you know, I see it's on fire. I stomp on it. And what do you know? My shoe's covered in shit. But you know what? This episode was so bad, I'm covered all in shit. Bad fucking episode. The hell with it.